So, um, Mark, it, I'm going to try and pronounce your surname. It, like Mark Joff Doshek? Really close. Very, oh, very close. Okay. <laughs> so, Mark, tell us, did you work in video games? Do you work for a company? What, what do you do? And where are you as well? <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm the managing director on paper of Gaslight Games. Uh, we're a Bradford-based uh, games development company. Uh, I'm also the lead programmer. Um, uh, we're a small studio, uh, mostly doing a lot of outsourcing for other companies. So we've worked across indie, double A, triple A, um, all over the country. Um, but most predominantly, especially these last sort of six months and 12 months, being in the West Yorkshire region, um, and, and sort of trying to, um, yeah, trying to keep things here and keep keep remote and sort of certainly stay within this region because of, of what it's uh, doing and growing as far as video games are concerned. I, I'm amazed at just how many indie games companies there are in this region. There's Just Add Water, Fat Kraken, Red Kite, TT Games down the road, uh, Cooperative Innovations. It, there seems to be quite a lot, would you say, or... Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. If you go back, um, cool, now we're going twenty odd years ago. Um, there, there was uh, Team Seventeen down in Wakefield, and then sort of before them, uh, there were there were other studios, all in the same kind of roughly in the same region. And it's been a, a constant boom. Uh, I could, we can attribute a large portion of it to um, the, the Screen Yorkshire and then offshoot uh, Game Republic. Um, and so those have certainly helped to, to drive what we've got and um, keep a lot of the talent inside of the Yorkshire region. That's certainly when I talk to many of the other indies. Um, they've worked, like myself, we've worked all, all up and down the country and we keep getting drawn back because the people are good, the talent's good, and the, the support is there. And I suppose as well, it might be nice to live in London or LA or Sydney or San Francisco, but actually there's, there's lots of opportunities to work within this sector, you, you know, in, in one of the loveliest parts of the world as well. You know, as a lot of people would travel from those places to come here, like uh, Naila, who I spoke to the other day, traveled from uh, Belgium to come and work over in Yorkshire as well for, for a company. So, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I myself, I mean, I didn't quite go as far. Um, yeah. I'm originally from Coventry, and uh, and I moved up to Bradford. I went to university um, in at Bradford when I was 18. So now that is several years ago, <laughs> um, and I've just stuck around. I mean, I've made some really close friends, um, I, and you know, I I, I adore everything around here i mean i only live now out in huddersfield so i'm not actually all that far away but we maintain an office in bradford um which we hope to get back to eventually uh and, and with everything else like i've mentioned sort of game republic and there's there's gamma yo so it's game maker yorkshire um we have meetups uh, sort of every quarter i think every three months um you know with York yorkshire games festival at the media museum and, and uh you know these these kinds of elements means that we don't have to travel to the other side of the world. Like I, I've, I've spoken uh, Develop down in Brighton. I've been to GDC in San Francisco and don't get me wrong, they're amazing. And I would do them again if I could afford it. But being able to, to have it here, I mean, the Yorkshire Games Festival, as I've mentioned um, last year or two years ago, we had uh, John and Brenda Romero. So the creators of, of Doom and Quake coming here, which would have ordinarily been, we'd have to go to to the other side of the world, Austin, Texas, or, or California, to be able to see them and having them come to us. It's not, the, the, you know, the price is, is making it more affordable because otherwise that's thousands and thousands of pounds in flights and hotels. So that's being right. able to have that talent come here is a big deal. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out a little bit more, like, do gas, so do gas like, do you develop console games? Is it games for mobile devices? Do you have like a speciality that you, that, that you, you work on? Um, over the last 10 years, we've done a little bit of everything. So we've done mobile games, console, some VR, um, the giant screen in Centenary Square. We actually worked on a game for that, which was motion controlled, um, along with uh, the University of Bradford, UNESCO, and uh, the, the Media Museum as well. Um, so we, we've, done, we've done a little bit of everything. Um, the last sort of four or five years uh, has, have been console. So we've worked on uh, Guitar Hero Live, uh, worked on the new Fast and the Furious, uh, and most recently I am working on Robot Champions, uh, 
um, an online game with Unreal Engine. I, I'm just like others. I'm, much, I'm amazed that all of this is going on in this part of the world. And also, I was just smiling and I was thinking, I think I've played some of those games that were were in the square. And maybe people watching think, "Gosh, yeah, that they they remember that." So you you when you were eighteen, you said you travelled to Bradford, which you might have thought at the time might have seemed a bit risky. When you were younger, did you did you think, "Oh, I, that's what I want to do. I want to go to university and learn how to design code, make the, the what what." What were you doing when you were like in your teenagers? Were you teaching yourself how to do these things at home? Was this was there a teacher at your school that highlighted things for you? What what was it? I can I can literally remember the point. Um, so now um, people are going to figure out how old I am. My very first console was a Sega Mega Drive, and I remember playing it, and it was the Jurassic Park game on it. And I, that's it. I was I, that's, this is what I want to do. I knew this from that day. I think I was maybe maybe ten, maybe eleven. I was like, that's it. I want to make video games. Um, and then as I started to try to learn and try to to create them, you go. Know, we're going back a long time here. The technologies were very very expensive you, you couldn't get unreal engine or unity for for free if you wanted these things there were thousands of pounds so you know you had to get make do with a demo and keep rolling back your clock <laughs> to to have your 30 days if you wanted a little bit more and then in school and college and university um i I didn't really apply myself. I, I got a, a bit more distracted than I maybe would have liked. I certainly didn't didn't do the work. And um, I do recall my A-level maths result. I got a U. My maths teacher was absolutely fantastic. And I know this now because of everything I do. I, I mean, I, I've made a fluid mechanics simulation. So that's a real-time water simulation that works on mobile uh, and many of the tech the, the techniques were the same ones that i was taught in my degree and a level and oh that's how you do it and that's what that means oh it's actually not that difficult and it, it took me you know 35 years to click but if suddenly i'm just going oh okay and i for me it was the the context that video games brought and still brings every time i come across a new a new thing. Like, um, we met some folks from Amazon a, co a couple of months ago, and they were very proudly telling us that Fortnite transmits more data, about 40 times more than an experiment at the Large Hadron Collider. That's so unbelievable. And yeah. And so it's like even, even Fortnite, so video games, we do more data than out of the LHC. And it, somebody has to process that. So somebody has to be a data scientist, but still doing video games. And what what we do is is single handedly the most complex piece of software that you can write, and and I get arguments from people who who write things for rockets engines and things. And once you start going through the list of everything that a video game has to do, and we have to do it as fast as we we have to do it, so um, every sixteen milliseconds, they kind of go, "Yeah, all right, fine." Surely, though, at some point when you were younger, you, there must have been I don't know adults, teachers who said to you at some point, no, Mark, that's not going to work. Um, are you sure you want to you want to make toys and things for people to play with? You're never going to be able to earn a living from that kind of thing. You want to get yourself a proper job. Did you ever have any of those kind of conversations? Or I, I have it and I still have it now. You, you make video games. Oh, you should totally talk to my 10 year old and, and you know, usually do. They're more clued in with what's coming out than I am because I sit all day making them um but it's it is a very more than a viable um industry certainly now um every, the last six years uh well i think it's seven years but every year the media industries release numbers based on how much the returns and the investments are so that's that's film and tv um newspapers books video games tv etc and the only two that have consistently turned a profit for the last seven years have been books and video games so we make more money than films. We, there are more video games in the last three years that have made a billion dollars than there have been films, including the Marvel ones. So the, the techniques and the technology, is, is, it's so much more available than it's ever been. Um, and, um, you, can, you can build a game on, on pretty much anything. I think I saw the other day somebody was running one on a Samsung fridge. So, you know... This idea that what we're creating is is just it's just toys for kids, um, or you know it's it's not it's not there's no point doing it. Um, 
you know, I, I keep coming back. It is it is the most complex, but at the same token, it, it is the most fun and it's the most rewarding. I could quit and go and get a huge job in the banking industry and just no. <laughs> the, 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 the other thing that strikes me as well, as the game sector, the, the industry has just grown and grown and grown, so have the amount of different roles. I mean, you can have people who only ever work on the, the back end stuff like in terms of making sure that the links between the like you said the fortnite server and all the data is there you have people who spend their whole uh, every like 18 hours a day sometimes just on character design um anatomy of figures uh, people who only ever create trees so you can have people who've like obsessed passionate about art other people about the machinery the hardware, of course, which you barely mentioned. There's just so many opportunities out there. Yes, absolutely. I think some of the the, the more interesting things from my side. So obviously, I, I'm a programmer, um, and I sit down and I, I write the code, and it's the most dull thing if you're not a programmer. But once you, like I created this system um, a few few months back that allowed our robots in the game to to regenerate parts and heal. And it took me four days to just get the first pass working so that the server verified and, and, and told everybody else and all these things. And an artist came in and added a wonderful effect and some glow and then boom, and everybody went, oh, isn't it wonderful? But he was right, it looks fantastic. And he was very adamant to say that he was able to take what I provided and create this thing on top of it. Um, but the the even further beyond this, the fantastic folks at Valve, so they make the Steam download software, but they also do Half-Life and Portal. And when they were doing Half-Life 2, in order to make sure that the levels, the, the city felt like a real living, breathing city, they, they got an architect in and a civil engineer so that when they designed the city, it felt like a proper thing. And then the artists turned that into proper levels that, that could be played. And this is the thing that we we can do. We're seeing it more with, uh, you know, I, I'm a I'm big advocate of the Unreal Engine, and so we're seeing a lot more movie directors use it to do pre-visualization. So they create all the sets in Unreal and just pop on some VR goggles and walk around the set. You know, when James Cameron did Avatar and he did his whole system sort of 15 years ago, he spent a million pounds making a server stack so that it could see on an iPad, basically, because the iPad didn't exist at the time, to be able to see this set. And now you can do the same thing with a laptop. So you know, the technology has leapt to, to uh, being able to do things in whatever it is you want to do. So like you say, art, characters, sound, music, architecture, making movies, you know, the, 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 the limit, it's limitless. I'm listening to you talk about it. I'm thinking, I think I've chosen the wrong career path. I should have got, this is something that I should have done. And I can also listen to you talking about the kind of work that you've done. It sounds like you'd be a strong advocate for working in an independent company. I mean, some of these, I've visited other companies, but it's like two or 300 people all working on one version of a game that for two or three years before it's released, that, you must feel like, you know, in that kind of situation, you're one tiny cog, whereas you're, you know, you, you're a smaller team and you're able to do things quite quickly together. Would you say it's more fun in an independent company than a, some huge, like, is it, what, what are they called? E, E. Oh, there's what EV, EG. Oh, I've forgotten the name of it. <laughs> well, I've yeah. have a, I've worked uh, across the the whole gamut of it. So I, I was at Activision. Um, so it used to be called Freestyle Games. Then now uh, an Ubisoft company um, in Leamington Spa, and uh, that's somewhere down in the Midlands. <laughs> and um, I was working there. And across the world, there are about four hundred or five hundred people working on Guitar Hero, and um, and and we were a small team. We were about. 20 people working in ui programming and as that game is entirely ui almost everything fell onto us as far as um, the visuals the final visuals uh, again there were artists who created it animators but there were so many elements to that part that if you were oh some of the the guitars didn't quite work so we would go back to the engineer and say oh what were we doing wrong what's going on with this that would go to the gameplay to say how is the the fretboard appearing on screen would go to the audio engineer to say you know is this supposed to come through on the left and the right channel and all these things working correctly so you had all these experts and had access to this this incredible range of talent and then when you come to go independent 
you are that range of talent. <laughs> and I think before I, I went to, to Activision, I did about five years of, of independent working with um, lots of smaller companies. Uh, and, you know, we, we kind of constantly fighting against the time and the scheduling to deliver. And then as soon as you come out of a AAA environment where people think, oh, that's it, you, you're going to get totally drained and demoralized. And it was wonderful and fantastic and they treated us brilliantly. Um, but coming out of that and going back to independent, it's all of a sudden going, ah, well, I'm not a writer or I'm not an audio person. I need that person. It's like, how much do they cost? I'm going to do it myself again. <laughs> um, and it just exposes you to all of this, uh, again, all this talent. But being able to to uh, come around to this one more time, the technology is now so readily available. You know, you, you want to record a sound um, for, for like sound engineers. So they do what's called Foley. Um, so you want somebody walking on a path. You put a microphone down, you walk on a path. You can just do that with your mobile phone and a little bit of cleanup. And now you've got custom sounds in your game, not having to pay someone for it or find a sound that's not quite appropriate. And it's the same across absolutely anything. You you want a piece of tech or a, a piece for the game, piece of um, a, 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 an image to use, a background image, just go and take a photo. Um, and you can just plug that in and most of the tech, Unreal Unity, they'll take care of a lot of it for you. So if we could, it's been so, it's so enjoyable listening to you talking. <laughs> like I said, I want to, I, I want to change career path. I, I want to do what you're doing. If, if I was maybe 20, 30 years younger and I came to you and said, Mark, where, where, where should I start? I can't at the moment go to college or university. Those options are not available. Are, are there any resources you'd recommend that people could learn from or? Well, certainly a... one of the biggest things is to take a look at um, some of the technologies. So like I mentioned like Unreal and Unity and there, there are so many others. There are some that are, might be a little easier to begin with as well to understand the flow. So this thing, one called Game Maker, which is fantastic. Um, there's the, the um, adventure games maker as well, and all these various ones. And so the, the first thing that I say to people is, uh, if you certainly if you want to make games, is to make games. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that is rule number one. And whatever you're thinking, it needs to go smaller than that. No, it's not small enough. Even smaller than that, smaller than that, smaller than that. All the way down, distill it to the absolute smallest piece you can and finish that piece. And not only will you get a tremendous satisfaction from finishing it, but if you try to build Fortnite out of the box when that's got a thousand people at Epic, it's just not going to happen. Um, and unfortunately, it's not going to I wish we could have more of them. Um, but if you if you start with Pong or start with Frogger or start with something, look look to the, the 80s. For, for, we didn't have the hardware to do it. So we, we had to do it on, on make do with what we had. Um, and think of something like that. Just build a clone, build your own version. And now you've got an idea of how to, how to do that thing and move forward. And there are right now there are so many uh, great YouTube tutorials. There, there's lots of great forums and communities. Um, but myself included, if you just reach out to games companies and ask some questions, it might take us a couple of days, but we will reply. I, I don't know of another studio, certainly in the region, that will just ignore an email. Um, and you know, again, I'm getting a bit old there. It's not, it's not WhatsApp or or Messenger. It is classic email, I'm afraid. Um, but if you do that, then we can at least you know point you in the right direction. And if you say, I don't want to program, I want to do art. That's another thing entirely. That that you know, there are lots of resources and ways that you can start to build and just just start building. That they are they're some of the best bits of advice I've ever heard because the first one when you said. If you want to do this thing, do it. Don't wait. Um, even if, say, like, say it's like, oh, I think I want to code games and I go away. No, no, I, I've tried it. I don't like it. Well, then don't do it. <laughs> Simple. And then the other thing you said, actually, think small. A lot of people say, oh, think big. Think what's the biggest, best. Because, and that's so frustrating because you're never going to realize, you're never going to build that big thing. And it's to think of something small. And that's already too big. You need to think smaller again. So it's almost like, look at this hand I made for this character. And look, I've managed to get one finger to move. But look at how, you know, how <laughs> convincing that movement is. Mark, yeah. it's been so enjoyable to chat to you. I, I hope we can do something like this again. And um, I'm going to be looking out for you as well. So you'll probably be at the next Yorkshire Games Festival, I'm guessing. Yes, as, assuming that there's one that can happen, we will yeah. be there for sure. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, thank you very much. All right. Thanks a lot.